When your side chicks got side chicks, you ain't gotta fight shit. Haha, <laughs> hey, is that from one of those black movies? What the fuck did you say? Turn around. I mean, you think of black anime characters, do you think it's Miles Potion? Because there are a lot of anime characters that I can't even discuss today. Mind you, there are characters that give a good representation of black people, and some are bad representation of black people, in which all of them belong in history. I'm basically generalizing what everyone sees, you know, the good, the bad, and obviously the racist. Like, there's a, there's a lot of racists. And no iffy blacks. No digital art theories. What I'm saying is no Miku, no Deku. Although it would be nice to see him. And no Miku, unfortunately, because she is a person of color. Although I do have to say she is a damn Korean. <laughs> Just look at that, bro. Just look at that. Just. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now, the first topic I would not like to address is uh, the racism. Some animes don't focus on skin. Now when a person of color in general is casted in a anime, they are not always in the focus, or basically the main focus of the show. It makes sense because their audience is predominantly Japanese. But other strikes have they have no knowledge of America. <laughs> hmm? Hey, what the fuck? You got a fucking problem? Even people from Japan today are unaware that we do not want pink lips nor red lips on characters that basically represent us. However, there are creators that are aware of this and try to do better. I mean, in Yu-Gi-Oh, they're basically an Egyptian pharaoh that basically stuck into a Japanese boy's body. And before you say anything, yes, he counts as black, but he also a coon. A character called Sister Chrome from Papa's Neverland. Uh, she just treats kindly. And although she is a great character, her first appearance may rub off Wrong ways to some people. Hi, children! I saw everything! Oh, huh? oh. A man's Usopp! Oh, okay, I love this character, but at the same time, what uh, basically made him a liar, his father was basically a shooter, and his first relationship was with a white girl. A white girl! And last but not least, let's get it up to Dragon Ball! Like, what else does it say at this point? Like, sure, being depressed by aliens and being depressed by slavery is similar, but. Get ready! I'm gonna say the N-word! From Officer Black to the reboot of Officer Black and to Bla Goku Black, the show is being very hypocritical when it comes to Binary. Kill! Take lead, murderer! Hold your fire! This man isn't black! I mean, Mr. Popo ain't even full black. Like, he's a genie. He offending both stereotypes. So how do we got here where there's characters that basically had red and pink lip? Well, there's about two theories about this. One, the Japanese version of Story for the Black Knight where the cover is literally red lips. And the other theory is one I really don't want to talk about. Boken Daikishi, otherwise known as the Adventures of Daikishi. The Adventures of Daikishi is both a manga and a free short animated film created by Shimada Kaizos. Both the manga and the shorts are propaganda films believed to inspire Japanese children that are, they are superior to other races. And that this episode is basically black natives. Also making believe that other races need to be colonized by Japan in order to save them. Which is... Why is that a thing? You basically see what they portray black people. Like even in the end, they basically like make the boy and the monkey basically become the king after beating up the natives. Like I know we need more representation, but I seriously am grateful we don't have to live with this. But Japan have learned their mistakes. They have made so many changes throughout history. Surely they won't refer to the monkey Bama drawings that they used to have back in the day. Why? Mr. Popo, you may leave the lookout if you wish. Don't tell me what to do! All these squares make a circle. Now this second part of the video is what I've been thinking basically for years now. And that is why does anime creators always put fucking black people in the last bro? Hello? I'm very curious why there are some characters that are basically in season 2 and never at season 1. I do you ever just see like this good supporting black character and then be thinking to yourself, man, if only you was in season 1, it could have been a lot more really easy. 
Like for example, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is sort of like an exception to his rule because the part 3 was before the part 1 and this gives confusing. Hey yo Muhammad, what are you doing dog? What are you doing? Hey yeah. Basically you got Luigi who basically turns into a cat for literally two seasons. And basically Neko the Nico bro. The one I think probably has the most disrespect is basically Ugon from 5 or season 2. He was basically in the Trina Academy with the main character. So it's really odd how he's basically not in season 1. I mean he by now basically a villain in season 1. Sean Wan, also a villain in season 1 and 2. We're not even gonna go with, we're not even gonna talk about with Saul cause that's a, that's a whole nother like, conversation entirely. But yeah, it's kinda odd how my dark skinned brethren is basically left out for later, if you know what I'm saying. And it's not the show's fault, it feels like the marketing was almost black baiting. Like, there were a lot of anime fans who started to watch Fire Force because of this man, which is good though. I try to see any evidence towards what I was fucking saying, even with the like high demand average, but to no avail. But there is one evidence. You see, this nigga just made a Joseph's reference. I see Okobo, you sly dog. You know every Negro loves a Jojo's reference. <laughs> okay, all right, that, that might not be. But Maybe it's just me having a bandana because with the confusing of subs and dubs, it appears that some American anime fans just think that every Japanese person with blonde hair is basically white. I mean, they say it in the shows themselves, you know, like some identify as American, but all in all, most of them are basically Japanese. Thinking this guy's white, they're white, she's white, like. Anime creators probably need to learn more about America, but at the same time, America needs to learn more about Japanese characters. Jesus Christ. Oh my god, I'm so glad I'm done with that topic. And now, let's go to my- Are we actually good to talk about anime characters? Wait a minute, this doesn't feel right. Hold on. Yeah. From Little Oasis to possibly owning a Japanese anime company, anime had honestly had been evolving, evolving with black people especially. So let's just take the time to basically appreciate the great animes that actually have black leads, let alone a black environment. And before you say anything, yes this is real and I really want to watch this. Michigo and Hachin, it basically consists of 22 episodes and it's basically about Hachin trying to find her father, like Michigo trying to find her lover and it gets very interesting. Afro Samurai basically based on the African Samurai. It honestly has a lot of like robot futuristic for being you know in a samurai movie but it's great though. Like the fighting scenes is gorgeous and the fact that the voice actor is Samuel L. Jackson. Also, I don't know if I didn't have time, but these are basically like the voice actresses of like characters that you probably didn't know. So, you know, take that with a uh, icing on a cake for you. On Netflix, it's basically a show called Carol and Tuesday. This is 24 episodes. This is basically made by the same guy who did Cabo Bebop and Skin and White Shampoo. Because of him, he basically animated a black environment world. Just cause. Like, Jintaniro Watanabe, part-timer Carol, basically meets rich girl tuesday and basically created a band and the fact that he brought like obscure singers too like you gotta check it out and what is also on netflix is ken buster and, you know some might say you know that this ain't an anime you know but it made by the same studios who basically made anime so you know what it count lashawn thomas basically made a karmic about three stories who are basically trying to do their own objective sometime only 12 episodes, so you know, check it out. Black characters are great too, like Yuichi, Ba from Tenya, Canary from Hunter Hunter, Killer Bee's Village Clan, Wagley from My Hero, Claudia from Lacrosse, Brawler from Akuma Drive, Dutch for Full Metal Panic, Hawaii and Sarah from the show Giant Gorge. It's basically about a boy meeting a mecha that came from God. They are also from the same island that the mecha came, and they also support the character. What's great about them is that they seem to be actually having personality towards them. And mind you, this came from the same show. So thanks, Joshukazu, I guess. Miyuki from Back 
watch a back what okay i haven't seen the show but i hope to see you soon what's with the bandit Suku jackson chui from kaon usaf from one piece castle near yokio okay th we don't talk about the show here by far like one of my favorite characters is zap from blood blockade battlefront like what i think of like general like a black character i i just think of this like he has a good attitude like doesn't give a fuck and also just reminds me how middle school emo i was at the time and i think about it not be everybody's favorite but if you haven't watched this show i i would recommend you do because honestly it's fucking great it has 24 episodes and honestly it's literally just like if my hero academia was basically a detective show like go ahead and watch it please so in conclusion i can just say i love every black anime character Yeah, my favorite is mm -hmm. Ooh, because Ooh is that guy, okay? Mm -hmm. Ooh, the, what are we talking about? Ooh, the Goku. I'm just throwing that out there, but okay. Yeah, it's Ooh. From Fire Force season two, he was pretty lit. Yeah, oh good, yeah, that's who oh I was talking about. He was a fucking baller. We got more showtime from him. Really oh my goodness, sucks. oh my goodness. Wait, like is, is, is Michiko back. and Michiko to Hodgson black? Please tell me she's black. I'll be upset if she's not. I don't know. I gotta look that up later, but yeah. Maybe. Who else is black in anime? Uh, what's that girl from Brief Sheep? Uh, there's Kaya Kaya. Kaya Kaya's a yeah, her. Oh, she was a beast. Oh, is Afro Latina? Oh my god. She was. She was a crush. Does that count? She was. That's count. Cool, <laughs> Afro Latina. Oh, does Afro Latina count? Sorry. Sorry. You're not black. So, but... Sorry. You're Afro Latina. You're not black. Sorry. You don't count. That's not bad. <laughs> that's that's a half their, erase half their fucking identity. <laughs> Yeah, she'd be my favorite. <laughs> the disrespect. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>